John Henry Brown is Bale's attorney. He spent 11 hours with his client early this week at Leavenworth Federal Prison in Kansas. He's with us now from Seattle. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here. Uh, thank you for coming. What can you tell us about Sergeant Bale's state of mind and, and what he mm -hmm. says about the events and incident in Afghanistan? Well, I think, as you know, um, I really couldn't tell you what he said, um, uh, but he really hasn't said much. He has a, uh, there's a little bit of inaccuracy in the reporting. Um, uh, he has some memories about what happened before the alleged events and some memories after the alleged events and some uh, windows here and there into things, but he really doesn't have any memory. And, and my um, in meetings with him clearly indicates to me that he's got memory problems that go back long before that. Um, so I think there, the part of your question was his state of mind. Um, yes. Uh, he's kind of in shock, um, not kind of. Uh, he, he didn't really know the nature of the specific allegations when I met with him, and I actually didn't go through it a lot. Um, we just spent 11 hours getting to know each other, talking about his service in Iraq and Afghanistan, and. Uh, what he's gone through, which just uh, very difficult for me to even listen to. Um, Why is that? And I think he was really happy. Why he is was it really difficult happy for you to also. go into? Oh, you know, I mean, I think you've seen the, uh, the movie The Hurt Locker, Charlie. Uh, you know, that's a Disney movie to compare to what these guys are going through. Um, you know, just seeing people um, blown apart next to you, picking up body parts, putting them in bags. Um, now, you know, a lot of servicemen go through that and don't have incidents uh, alleged like this, but um, it's pretty horrific. And we do know he had a concussive uh, head injury, which um, is serious. Um, and we also know it was not treated for a variety of reasons. Does this all suggest that your defense for him will be limited capacity, that his experience in Afghanistan, uh, both physically and mentally, took a toll? Well, you know, that's the interesting, the interesting question. I don't know. I mean, I'm a criminal defense lawyer, and, you know, my first reaction is, uh, and I don't mean this um, uh, disrespectfully, but my first, my first reaction to all of this is prove it. Um, this is going to be a very difficult case for the government to prove, in my opinion. Um, there is no crime scene. There is no, you know, there's no CSI stuff. There's no DNA. There's no fingerprints. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how the government's going to prove this. But let's assume that they can prove um, some of these allegations, then, of course, his mental state will become um, part of the, the approach that we'll take to explain and hopefully um, defend him properly. So the mental state eventually will be definitely an issue. You've also said just really quickly that you, you told our colleague Peter Van Sant earlier this week you intended to put the government on trial here. Um, is there a suggestion on know. your part that, that he, was, he may be a scapegoat here? Well, the answer to the second question, pardon me, pardon me Erica, is yes. Uh, I think there is a possibility he could be scapegoated here. I did not um, say that um, uh, to Peter. I don't, uh, as a matter of fact, I want to make it very clear, I don't want to put the government on trial. I certainly don't want to put the military on trial that I respect gratefully, uh, great, uh, greatly. Um, but I think the war is on trial, and I didn't do that. I think this incident has created a dialogue in the country and around the world about the war, mm -hmm. and I think that's entirely appropriate. I, I'm not doing that. That's just happening. John Henry Brown, thank you very much for joining us from Seattle. It's a pleasure.